hacking the glass ceiling with Neopets. My name is Charmaine, and this is my story. So if it was my first time looking at this website today, I'd probably exit out of it so fast, because it looks like it's filled with viruses. But for a period of my life, this game was all I knew. I moved from here to Hong Kong when I was seven years old, and it was terrifying. I remember studying so hard for my first Chinese exam with my mom, but when I finally got my exam paper on the day of, I had no idea how to even read the questions, so I didn't know what to do with the vocabs list I studied. I developed terrible anxiety. It got so bad to the point where I'd have to throw up every morning before I went to school. My parents would try to get me to throw up before I left the house, but a lot of times I wouldn't make it, so they'd have to clean up for me on the way. Needless to say, life was a little tough, but there was at least something that I could always look forward to every morning and every night. And that's the game that I showed you, Neopets. It's a virtual pets online game that allows you to customize and own your own cool pets. But there was so much more you could do. You could play mini games. You could own your own store, your own gallery. You could join a guild. You could talk on forums, and you could make so many new friends. Your goal in the game can shift from week to week, and the possibilities were endless. And that's what I loved about it. That's what kept me coming back day after day. But slowly, I realized my favorite part of the platform was user lookups. Neopets lets you customize the way that your user lookup or your user profile page looks with HTML and CSS, which are computer languages that lets you manipulate the way a web page looks. So at first, I would just go in the internet and then I would look for user lookup templates that other people made. I would copy them and then paste them into my own user lookup. Then I started discovering this really bad habit of removing credits off of these user lookups that I copied. <laughs> so someone actually neo mailed me and told me they were going to report me. I told them not to and that I would change my ways, but old habits die hard, and <laughs> I basically just got more strategic about the way that I was copying this code. I would modify it just enough that I could pull it off as my own, and there it was. But as I got pickier and pickier, I realized that this just wasn't making the cut for me anymore. I want to code my own user lookup from scratch. So I looked on the internet and I tried to find some guides, and I found the perfect guide put out by Neopets themselves. And it says, HTML is very simple to learn and anyone can do it. You don't need to be a programmer or even to have really used a computer before. I sat there and I knew I checked both of those boxes. So I spent the next couple of months just learning HTML and CSS from these guides, along with other ones that I found on the internet. I was so excited when I made my own user lookup from scratch with art that I compiled on MS Paint myself. I then started becoming obsessed with making these user lookups. I would try to make one for every occasion, whether it be for fall, winter, Christmas, my birthday. I accumulated so many of these user lookups to the point where I decided, hey, I'm just going to make a website and put all these user lookups on there so other people could use them. That website looks a little like the one you see here. Well, a little worse than it, but you get the idea. So that was my first crack at open source development, which is the idea that people share their code and you can build on top of each other. I also started talking on forums, and I got feedback for my work. I even started getting requests for user lookups that other people want to see from me. So there I was, a seven-year-old little girl living in Hong Kong, playing an online game where the user base was predominantly in North America. But none of that mattered because I had passion. I loved what I was building, and I was surrounded by a community of people who shared that passion. That's all there was to it. Neopets even opened up a world of opportunities for so many people like me. Front-end development, graphic design, game development, software development. And because of the story-based nature of the game, it got a lot of us into storytelling, too. It definitely fueled our creativity. So when it finally came time to choose my major in university, I knew I had to study computer science. I was so excited to finally be able to study a topic that I was so passionate about, something that intrigued me so much. I was ready to make the next big thing, and I felt like I was finally making an impact. But I also couldn't brush off the feeling that every time I stepped into a classroom, it was filled predominantly with males. 
And don't get me wrong, they're great, and I made lots of great friends, but it was intimidating. Why weren't there more people like me in those classrooms? Well, I decided to dig on the internet, and here were the statistics I found. After peaking in 1991 at 36%, the rate of women in computing is now in steady decline. Women only take up 26% of the computing workforce, and for females under the age of 25, they make on average 29% less than their male counterparts. 74% of young girls express interest in STEM or computer science-related fields. So that means somewhere along the way, those girls were scared away by statistics like these. So then I was encouraged to check out Women in CS initiatives at our school, and I was pleasantly surprised. I was surrounded by faculty members who were doing incredible things. This past October, I went to Grace Hopper, which is the largest celebration of women in computing in the world. And there, I met so many women from all over who are changing the world of technology by giving new perspectives, new ideas. And by having these diverse minds working on different projects, we're actually able to eliminate or minimize the number of biases that we see in technologies that we use from day to day. That made me realize that if they could do it, Maybe I could too. I felt empowered and I didn't feel so alone anymore. So I started volunteering at initiatives like Girl Smarts for Tech, which is a coding camp for, computers, for girls in grade six to seven trying to learn how to code. I also started checking out hackathons, which are these friendly programming competitions, which is for encouraging students to code for anywhere from 24 to 48 hours. And they get to work on anything from software to hardware and it really focused on learning. But at the same time, I was once again treated with the unsettling statistics. But this time, I wasn't scared. I want to make a change. So I founded UBC Hacks with my friend Kristen. And the goal of this hackathon was to create an inclusive, diverse, and accessible community within Vancouver. We made sure to have different representation within our graphics. We managed everything from sponsorships, emails, social media, all on our own. And we also made sure to have workshops that people could attend. So that even if it was your first time attending a hackathon or you had no idea how to code, you could still gain valuable experiences from attending our hackathon and you could gain value from that. So we did just that. This past December, we had 43% female participants and 2% identifying as non-binary attending our hackathon. That was a big deal for us. We were making a difference. But at the same time, what was important was that everyone who attended the hackathon created projects that mattered, projects that made a difference. Anything from accessibility resource finders on campus to chatbots that were helping eliminate stigmas around mental health issues a lot of students faced. These were incredible projects. And so the next time you think that programming has to look a little something like this, and it's so scary, I'm here to remind you that for a long time in my life, this was my dev environment. It's just a box in Neopets. And it's pretty much the same thing as if you were to code on Microsoft Word. So to wrap it up, I'd like to address the glass ceiling, which is the barrier of advancement that a lot of minority groups within their relative industries face. But let's break that glass ceiling. The idea here is that everyone can code, and everyone should try. Beyond the coding helps make your problem-solving skills or logic better, there's actually so much more. They can help you get better at what you already do whether that be running machine learning algorithms to improve d medical data sets, or just creating your own website to put your new photography on. There's something for you. And no matter who you are, there are resources out there for you to learn. So if you're currently an undergrad student, there's courses like CompSci 100, which is an introductory computer science course that is so fun, and I actually TA'd for it. I definitely recommend something like that. There's also Women in CS initiatives that you should definitely check out. And then I've already mentioned, but there's Girl Smarts for Tech, which is for great girls in grade six to seven, just trying to get into coding and learning all things computer science. There's also Major League Hacking, which is which they host hackathons in all over North America and Europe, 
and they really focus on the emphasis on learning rather than it being competition. And then lastly, there are online resources like Code Academy that allows you to just code on the go and learn basic programming concepts no matter where you are or who you are. So really, if a seven-year-old me can do it, you can do it too. And really, actually, do it for the seven-year-old me who love Neopets. No one can undo everything, but everyone can do something. So why not use that power to foster a safe and welcoming environment for those who are just looking to work on something they're really passionate about and not let underrepresentation scare them away? Don't forget, together we can hack that glass ceiling. Thank you. Thank you.